Are you ready? Hey, you think you can tell us what to do? You think you can tell us what to wear? You think that you're better? Well, you better get ready. It's Monday. We are here on the Retro Wrestling Revival. I am Johnny P. Joining me as always, the crock of shit cup winner himself, Mr. Oh, no. Brother Martin. Yeah, you're on. Don't worry about it, man. You're good. We're here. I'm on. You're yeah. on. You're live, man. What's going on, man? How you doing, Brother Martin? I'm doing fantastic, man. I'm excited to have some fun with you watching good old-fashioned wrestling here on our Watch along series for the Monday Night Wars. Right now, we are. Uh, this is a wonderful stopping point that we're at right now, like a wonderful roadblock, so to speak, called Slamboree, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, this pay per view is themed around NFL legends. So I'm, I'm. It's eighteen degree. <laughs> really good, or oh, fucking know. horrible. So uh, I don't remember this one? To be honest with you, I, I, I. I watched it years ago, um, so I'm just going to say uh, Steve McMichael's in it, so shout out to him. Uh, go to TeamMongo76.com and uh, donate. Uh, but uh, we got Kevin Green. We got Reggie White, the Minister of Defense, man. We got just uh, we got the Steiner brothers, Ray Mysterio. We got William Regal. We got Kevin Nash, X-Pac. I mean, just we got a whole boatload of talent tonight. So hopefully it could that will e- equate to a great show. Hopefully Rick Steiner doesn't make any nasty comments tonight. <laughs> oh, God. oh, God. So what do we got on the docket tonight, brother? So, uh, like, there's two people which I... Okay, like, there's one tag team and one person on this show I know you're looking forward to watching, but I'm not going to spoil it for you. Daniel says, oops, I got the shows mixed up. It better not be Benoit versus Sullivan, main event, or I quit. <laughs> no, it's not going to be. I don't think we got that on the card tonight. At least uh, not that I remember on it. Uh, we got a... We're going to break it up into two parts, as we always yes, do we in are. reviews, because they definitely go on for uh, three hours, and we don't have the attention span, nor do most people, to sit no. for three hours and watch something. Yep. So I'm going to break it up tonight, and uh, here's going to be the kickoff for part one tonight. Could be some sleepers here. There might, might, might not be a couple of bad matches uh, you know, out here, so we'll have to see how it goes. So this Slamboree 97 aired on may 18th 1997 so we're we're it we're getting close to that date there when it actually happened uh was that 26 years ago nearly can you believe that's almost 26 years since this event holy shit man long time huh time flies by and may 18th is actually my wedding anniversary how many years um this year will be 12 
Oh, beautiful. That's a wonderful so, yeah. thing. Well, almost the congratulations on your wedding anniversary then. So that's a great thing. I'm excited. But, uh, you definitely were not married in May 18th of 1997. So I was nine years old. So no, yeah, you were just a young in here. So uh, this came from Charlotte, North Carolina. Woo! Woo! It's coming from Flayer Country. Actually, North Carolina is the house that Brad Attitude built. Let's just say that right now. So April wait. 30th. Rick right. Flair was the foundation, but Brad Attitude built the Brad house. Attitude built that shit years ago. Even okay. Let me just say it. I, uh, Winston Salem, April 30th for AML. Brad Attitude's going to take that punk ass bitch, uh, Caucasian Mike, and he's going to make him tap and scream, I quit all day. Boom. Long. How Don't you doing? Over with. It's going to be a one star bitch fest here. Let me oh, tell you that. Really quick, I got a tribute to Daniel. It's which is about 15 seconds long, so just to let you know, hit us with it. Who the hell is it? What do you want? Julius Priest Barber is one of those flaming bags again. Don't put it out with your boots, Dad. <laughs> Don't tell me my business, devil woman. <laughs> Call the fire department. This one's out of control. <laughs> Lord Martin, I'm telling oh, you. Here we go. Here we go. This is the best part. Shit, poop. <laughs> <laughs> something, dude. I'm telling you. Please tell me you've seen Billy Madison. I, of course, I've seen Billy Madison a million times, <laughs> dude. I, I love it. Theater when I was a kid, I love. Holy it. shit! Don't tell me my business, devil woman. <laughs> <laughs> Which I hope my marriage is like that when I'm old. Daniel so, says Roddy Piper not have the, might might not have the attention span to notice that Flair will be beating up the NWO. <laughs> Well, here's the card for tonight, all right? So here's going to be part one here. Uh, WCW uh, World Television title match is going to kick it off. It's going to be Lord Steven Regal taking on the champion, the Ultimo Dragon. So oh, it's going to be good. All right. Should be a good match. I don't know what to expect from the second match, but we'll have to see. It's Medusa versus Luna Vachon. Okay. All right. So who knows what we're going to get from that. Now, I'm going to totally fuck this name up here in a second. So I've never in my life heard of this dude, but... It's got Rey Mysterio Jr. in it, so it's going to be a fun one, I'm sure. It's Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Yuji Yasuroka. Wow. Yeah. Shit, sorry. What's your All favorite right. uh, Yuji match? Um, the next one. Yeah, the next one. All right. I I can't wait to see who Yuji Yasuroka is. I've never seen him. Maybe he's maybe he's an awesome yeah. high flyer. I have no idea. Uh, then we have one of your all-time favorites. Uh, Blood Runs Cold is here. Glacier is taking on. Oh um, God, yes. Mortis with James Vandenberg. So yes, yes. This is going to be a, a, a over fucking... under. Chris, will the will his entrance be longer than the match? Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah, I got to go with that too. I think it definitely is going to be. And then the final match of the night is going to be for the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship, and it's going to be the Iceman Dean Malenko taking on. J E double F J A double R E double G T. Ha ha. That's Jeff Jarrett. Ha ha. Ain't I great? Yes. Ha ha. All yes. right. So that's going to be the lineup for tonight. You guys want to watch along with us? Go on over to the Peacock app. Yep. The easiest way to watch it and look up Slamboree 97. Under Slamboree, it is season five, episode one. And you can watch yeah. along with us. Mr. Martin, are you ready to go? I'm ready to rock and roll, baby. And there's a famous wrestler that uh, that uh, is watching along with us tonight. And it's... That's how you take out Trump, and he's a friend of mine. He's a friend of yours? I'm quite fond of Donald. I, do. I don't share some of his uh, policies, <laughs> right. you know that. Yeah. I live in the Baja six months out of the year. Well, I like that you would run against him because you're taller, you're bigger and stronger. I'm taller, I'm He couldn't bigger. bully you. I, oh, as you know, I have a... <laughs> I fucking love it. I'm sorry. I'm in a mood tonight. All right, let's do this. Sasso's great, man. I'm just going to throw that out there. I think Sasso and Cross do the two best Jesse impressions out there. I okay, okay. If things don't work out with with like the Killer Cross gimmick, uh, the, the Body Cross I think would be a great gimmick. I don't know. It ain't working out too well for him so far in this uh, second run with the WWE. <laughs> so he might need to uh, revert back to that. No offense to him, he's a great talent, but he uh, might have to revert back to some other type of gimmick here soon because it isn't yeah. working out too well so far. I'm telling you. I got gotcha. you. All right, brother. Let's get, let's get All right, going. Let's get rolling here, folks. If you want to watch along with us, go on over. Check it out on Peacock, Slamboree 97. All right, brother Martin. Let's hit that in five, four, three, two, one. Let's hit play right now. Oh, 
Oh, look at them. Look at this. These three legends of the gridiron. Yes. Oh, man. Just that 92 cap that Reggie's got on is pretty phenomenal. It is. Would you like that? I'm not rocking that shit out, but if it was a Reggie White signed one, I would take it and put it up in my collection. I got you. Were they allowed to wear officially licensed uh, National Football League gear on air? Well, or, uh, what's his name? Uh, Green just had a Panthers outfit on. So oh, okay. I think that answered our question of that one easily. I, I was gonna say I, I don't, I don't know, but then it, he just walked out as you said it right there. Well, with there his you Panthers go. Outfit. Reggie's got his '92 stuff on there too, so I guess they're rocking it out. I got you. I mean, it's free advertisement for them. I can't see why they'd be upset about it. it, it there you go. That's what I was thinking. Listen to this like cheesy '80s porn music right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Loving it. There we go. Dude, that dude, like the arena is packed. It's a packed house out there in Charlotte. <sighs> I love welcome the stage. Every, welcome out to anybody watching on YouTube or on Facebook with us. Make sure you hit that like and follow button if you're watching on uh Facebook. Hit like us and follow us on Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell there so you get notified. We would greatly appreciate it. Hell yeah. Oh my god, this is awesome. We got three Jesus legends. Lee Marshall uh, supplied the music, Chris. Hell yeah. Well, he's got that 80s porn stash on him. Well, he's going to those college towns, man. He's got experience. Bro, he, he's out there living his best life. What he a is. what what a what a group here on commentary here. Tony Schiavone, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. And of course, yeah. the greatest uh, talent in wrestling history, all around, what? in my opinion, Bobby the Brain. So you got one of the greatest announcers ever. You got one. Of, you got the greatest talent ever, and you and you have what many consider the greatest promo ever. Yeah. All sitting together. Hell of a roster of talent right there with these with these three, huh? Good God, yeah. Like without a doubt. I always love Tony Schiavone on commentary. He didn't get enough love because he got burnt out at the end of WCW, but I really love Tony Schiavone on commentary. Still do. Uh, yeah, like without a doubt, um, he's the constant classic uh, Tony is. And like the fact is, is that I love Tony. And uh, like we've said this before, he's become, he's become, <laughs> how do I say this nicely? Very crabby, but he's still very he's, talented. He's very crotchety. There you go. Here comes a little William Regal out here. It's always good to see Mr. Regal out. This stage setup is freaking awesome. It is really cool, this stage setup. I like it. It's Boy, he it's, got good heat back in the day. <laughs> Look at him. He did. <laughs> oh, God. A little bit warning the fans there. Don't touch me, you stinky shits. Oh, yeah. And you you, you know Stephen Regal is one of my favorite all-time wrestlers, and I feel like one, one of the greatest to never be – one of the greatest to never be world champion. Daniel says Dusty's finding his next sweet sapphire in the crowd in Charlotte tonight, baby. Oh, yeah, because you know what they say, Doc of the Bear, the sweet of the juice, baby. <laughs> oh. Here comes Ultimo Dragon. Love Ultimo Dragon matches always. He's what a talent he was. The ultimate dragon. Ultimate, Ultimo, it's all the same. They change it up every other week. No shit. Now he's the ultimate, but it was the Ultimo earlier when they did it. I wonder if it was like a running gag that they would do to just never give this guy like one straight name. Ultimate, Ultimo, what is it? I don't know. But wasn't this supposed to be WCW versus NWO? I don't know. They didn't really have too much. Well, they, the main event is, of course. It's, uh, oh, yeah. you know, Piper and, uh, you know, Flair and Green versus uh, Six Hall and Nash. No Hogan, no. No Macho tonight, I don't think. Oh, yeah, like my wife said something about uh, we were uh, watching a thing on Scott Hall last night, and she's like, he was a damn good-looking man. I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, uh, she's like, no, not you, him. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So, <laughs> yeah, no offense. He didn't look like Scott Hall did back in the day, buddy. No. Mike Tanay's here. Beautiful. It's nice to get Mike on commentary here. I know. Dude, speaking of another legend, like a uh, legend of the commentary, uh, Mike Tanay. Daniel says, such a beautiful title that TV title was. I'll take on Ultimo Dragon for the belt. Absolutely. I love the WCW TV title. It's one of my favorite uh, belt designs. I would say that's uh, number two on my favorites with World Championship Wrestling. 
the first one's the big gold belt. The second one is the TV title, and the third one is the U.S. title. Yeah, the, the U.S. title is great too. I got to go with the big gold belt too. I think, but that TV title was next for me. Oh, uh, we we spoke about this off air. But what's your opinion of the new World Heavyweight Championship on in the in the WWE? You know, it's like okay. It's not a bad look. It's not like awful or anything like that. But to me, it just screams everybody else but Roman. You know, because Roman can't be there. Roman, Roman is the tribal chief. He is the the main event. He is the big show, and it definitely screams secondary to Roman. That's for sure. I would have preferred them bringing back the big gold belt, but that's just me. Yeah, but it's not bad looking. It's okay. No, I got you. So, what do you think? I think honestly, you're right that it's a it's 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 basically like to satisfy fans because of the draft um, and say, hey, we're trying, and we know Roman is a part timer now. But hey, you're gonna have your champion here, even though it's gonna be secondary. And so it's similar to back in the day with the world heavyweight title as compared to the like the WWE title. So you had Cena that was holding like the WWE title, and then you would have somebody like, with all due respect, Jack Swagger holding Thumb, the world heavyweight title. Cash. And you and you could definitely tell like I like the difference between like the uh, 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 when it comes to quality. So there's Roman Reigns and there's everybody else in the WWE. Yeah, like there's no one that's even close. So and uh, which I was watching a thing on uh, the Jim Cornette experience on YouTube, and uh, Jim's talking about uh, who's a better heel. Uh, What's da- Ultimo Dragon doing there? What he was do- he doing like fucking leg lifts. Sorry, oh, wow. I got distracted by that there for a second. Oh, no, 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 that's fine. He's talking, uh, fans were asking him, who do you think is a better heel, Dominic or uh, Maxwell? And, uh, and of course, Jim said Dominic's doing phenomenal, but Maxwell's in, uh, like, a league of his own, and he's been doing it a lot longer. Uh, but I think, ultimately, like, the best heel is Roman. We'll go back to Maxwell Jacob Friedman later on this evening at some point, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll have a little conversation about him this this weekend, just or or this evening here, just a little bit later, I'm sure. Oh, I love Maxwell. Absolutely. (laughs) Daniel says the title being crowned in Saudi will be amazing. Bring on almost against Cody. (laughs) Yes. I think he farted and tried to (laughs) make it. This is beautiful. <laughs> JF, yes. Dude, da- dude, Daniel's in rare form tonight. I love this. Yeah, he always is. That's the best part about it. <laughs> if we could only get Daniel on a podcast. I no shit. Tremendous. He'll never do it, though. I know. I've asked but... him before. He, he he would be he would be just as good. I think me and you like would piss ourselves. Yeah, I just about pissed myself half the time during the show anyway. So. so, yeah. Dude, look at these creatures in the front row here. Wow. It's, you read my mind, what, which I was about the to transition guy with the mustache. There, what is going on with him, man? Is he part of the village people? I don't know what he is part of, but it ain't looking nice. Does he need a Bud Light? Uh, he, he needs a, he needs an eye cold Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks like he could be fucking uh, Billy Bob Thornton's uh, long lost cousin from Sling Blade. French fries and mashed potatoes. <laughs> you got some French fries there. <laughs> so yeah, I love this. Um, Who is English in this Japanese fella here? They let him in here since Pearl Harbor. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, my Japanese. Goodness. Japanese. Their military is the second strongest in the world. They don't have a military anymore since World War II. Yeah, they do. <laughs> We got a good education here in Charlotte, North Carolina. How you doing? I You're do. done. The guy wants to be Hulk Hogan with the mustache, but isn't even the Wish version. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't the Wish version. He ain't the Etsy version. He ain't any version. That's like the picture I posted like a few days ago of that guy that thought he was taking a picture with Hulk Hogan. This is oh, the dream. God, these people. Oh, yeah. So, um, what is the guy? Is he the the guy next to him? Looks like he's the Hamburglar from fucking McDonald's. Two do, two uh, people over there, right next oh to the back. Oh my god! Guy. Look at him. He, look at the glasses. He's he looks like the fucking Hamburglar from McDonald's. This is, dude. You talk about rare form, man. Like this crowd. You know, I've spent a lot of time in Charlotte. I don't remember the people being this interesting. <laughs> I spent many a days in Charlotte. Let me tell you that. 
Oh, and believe me, I live down here, so yeah, I know. I'm telling you, woo. Ooh, look oh, look at the Ultima Dragon there. Nice. Beautiful toe hold. Right, it's a I don't good know why match. He's doing a headstand there on the top, but he is. Oh, look at him. Hey, John, I figure we could do like a, uh, we could call this a wrestling show, but uh, we could talk about everything but that the whole time. Sound yeah. good? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> you can do that. We could talk yeah. about this crowd here in the back. A the, the couple people there, these kids slipping the middle finger up there, getting it on camera. Damn oh kids. My God. The guy in the green looks like Jose Lothario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Yes. The boyhood dream has come true. Yes. Jose's Jose's uh, looking for a job here in uh, ninety in, in this time in ninety seven probably isn't he? Well, yeah, because uh, Sean uh, Sean dumped him at this point. Yeah, he did. The, the boyhood dream came true, and he didn't want Jose on the road with him anymore. He said, "You're out of here, buddy." Wasn't Jose like the super sock or something like that? The what? His gimmick was it's called no, was super the, sock. I think he was just Jose Lothario. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think he was just Jose Lothario. He's better known for being Shawn Michaels' trainer. So, yeah, I think Shawn he did a pretty had good him job. With him there for the build up to the Bret Hart thing, and then uh, he got tired of having Jose on the road with him. So he cramped his style. He kicked him to the curb. He genetted him. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> Sorry, just, Marty. Just like he did to Sonny, anyways. Sunny oh. days, eh? Yeah. Is a packed card here in Charlotte. Let's be real. Charlotte is the uh, epicenter of WCW back in the day, wouldn't you say? Oh, without a doubt. Charlotte, without Greensville, Winston-Salem, all that whole area in North Carolina. But Greenville. There only is one big spot in Winston-Salem, and one, one big star for Winston-Salem, and we all know it's Brad uh, Start. It's It starts with a B, and it ends with an attitude. Damn right it does. I can't wait to see a bitch slap that punk white, uh, white Mike. Uh, it's gonna happen, and oh. it's gonna be glorious, dude. He he did a tremendous promo this weekend in a Sonic uh, in a Sonic drive through. He did, yeah. I'm telling you, he did he did a tremendous one on the AML uh, thing there. It was it was wonderful because White Mike did one in the back of his '92 uh, Escort there when he was Uber Eats and driving or whatever. Brad had to troll him a little bit, you know. He had to come down from his palatial estate. Yeah, wait, since wait, wait. the boyhood dream came true, he didn't need Jose anymore. Jose couldn't even get Sean sloppy seconds. He had to use his super sock. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe he was the super sock. I don't know. I don't know. Jose you tell me. Here. You tell let's me. See. Why don't you tell me? All right, let's see Jose Lothario. All right. He passed away in 2018. At 84 years old. Wow. Damn. Let's see. He was the Southern Tag Team title with Don Curtis, Dory Funk Jr., and Joe Scarpara, a.k.a. Yeah. Chief J. Strongbow. Really? Yeah, let's see. I don't, he was the he did use the nickname the Super Sock. Oh no. He was he used the name El Gran Lothario. The Great yeah. Lothario, Jose Lothario, and the Super Sock. The Sack. So super Sack. Right. Daniel says Brad's going to be the AML champion for years. Get ready for a monthly trip to Winston-Salem. Okay. You thought uh, Roman's reign was long. Listen, so. Roman even knows, okay? Roman knows not to step foot in North Carolina. You want a spoiler, Chris? They wanted What's to up? do WrestleMania 40 in Charlotte. In the big yes. Carolina Panthers stadium, they did, and uh, Brad had to put a kibosh on that one because he runs that shit. Okay, <laughs> he runs that. Unless they're paying him like at least half of the gate coming in there, it ain't worth his time to roll into his yard. Even the tribal chief knows that North Carolina is the house that Attitude built. All right, that's why Roman went to WWE because he wanted no part of Brad. Doesn't want anything to do with him, and I love being the tribal chief. I think he's tremendous, but yeah. even the tribal chief is smart enough to know that the uh, the real money, the real match is Big Brad Attitude. Well, straight up, I'm gonna say this right now. Um, there's a chance uh, me and uh, Daniel like we're talking about doing like a little road trip 
and going to go see the National Wrestling Alliance, the crock of shit cup. Right. So, so like, so I'm trying to get this on. Uh, I like to catch fire and go viral. I like a, a minimum 13 people uh, retweet it. Um, I'm gonna say this right now. Like the crock of shit cup, I think is is more catchy than the Crockett cup because 13 people is viral. Yeah, it, exactly. Thirteen people is viral. Yep. So yeah, so yeah, like the crock of shit cup, I think would be great. This is a and, stiff match between these two. Uh, yeah, and it, like the match is really good, actually. Well, did you expect anything different from Ultimo Dragon or no. Stephen Regal? Unless no. your name's Goldberg, you're not having a bad match with uh, Regal. I think that's what got Regal fired. Yeah, because he beat the shit out of him in the middle of the match because he got tired of him stiffing him. Oh, yeah. Look at that nice friggin' bridge. Like It's like a modified STF right there. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, did you hear Goldberg's comments about uh, losing the ma- uh, losing his first match to Kevin Nash saying, they didn't even know that it was my birthday? I did not see that one. <laughs> and Kevin Nash is like, hey, uh, Goldberg, uh, here's a little uh, fun tidbit. Uh, your birthday is also the anniversary of like my mother's death. I think that trumps your fucking birthday. Yeah, sorry, buddy. So it yeah. says uh, when you see who's in the tournament, crock of shit will probably be an understatement. <laughs> you got Tyrus in it. I, I, I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh, um, man, that's gonna be a fucking barn burner right there. We which I got my, about a hundred people. Uh, uh, one hundred and three. One hundred and three. All right. What? Which? Which I have a source. And you know who that is. You gonna uh, go travel around and take pictures like a jabroni for them? Well, if they pay me in cold beer and hot sandwiches, there I might. Go. I'm telling you, think of traveling around to take pictures for the NWA and what a fucking tool you have to be. So I'm most just people saying. would want to go and like go on nice vacations and hang out with other things, you know. Going out and parking in front of the crock of shit cup in the front row, boy, that's <laughs> fucking hive. That that's fucking cool shit right there. Woo! Yeah, yeah. No, no the but... NWA Tyrus will win it by himself. Daniel says. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! No, no, no. That or like we're thinking about uh, doing uh, watching the Super Show um, in uh, the wonderful town of Charleston, uh, which is coming up next month. So uh, is, that w- is that WWE? Yeah. Oh, that'll be fun then. Because uh, Cody is going to be there, uh, so it's going to be Raw and Watch SmackDown. It. Regal Stretch. Oh, beautiful! This I is used to really like good the one. NWA too when they first came back out, man. I think they diluted it. The booking's been absolutely horrendous. The only person that I give a fuck about in that still is Damian Sandow. That is it. He's still around. Yes, he's oh, doing man. fun. He's doing great work with good his characters. Him. Good for him. He's a hell of a talent. They really it, started off on fire and and then shit the bed over there, in my opinion. Oh yeah, they did. Well, it's kind of like with AEW right now. They started off like a house of fire, and now, I hate to say it, it's not, shit's unwatchable. There's some things that are okay over there. I checked it out last week for the first time in a little bit. It actually wasn't that bad. (laughs) I'm trying, man. I want, because I want all these companies to succeed, because that means more more places for these men and women to work. And I'm, you know... But I'm not going to kiss their ass either and say, oh, my God, it's amazing no matter what. So if it's good, yes, I will say, hey, it was good. But if it sucks, I'm going to say that, too. So, yeah, um, I would uh, – the stuff with uh, Maxwell, it's absolutely off the charts fantastic. Uh, you, you talk about people that are way above the rest. I would say Maxwell is one of those. Him versus Dominic Mysterio. In a good prison, God, that'd be great. yard match. Boom. That'd be great. I think they're going to go over the time limit here, Daniel. And that was a horrible pin attempt. I agree on the ropes. I thought it was like a 10-minute TV time limit or whatever it is that they would do for the TV title. Yeah, no shit. Like, they've gone over by, like, seven minutes. Ultimo Dragon is about ready to do something here that he might regret. I think Regal's going to catch him. No. Oh, Regal just stepped away and... uh, Dragon oh. landed kind of weird on his leg there. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, 
And did you hear, uh, which I was listening to like a story last night with uh, Jericho. He's talking about how him and Haku were down in Mexico at an airport. I listened to that. That was hilarious. Yeah. In Acapulco. <laughs> yes. So there's a little wrestling convention that's coming up here. Daniel sent me a thing. Bischoff's going to be there. Uh, really? Yeah. Haku's going to be there. Gangrel, Scorpio, the Rock and Roll Express. I know I'm missing a couple here. Uh, it's 100 bucks for like the whole meet and greet. For the whole that's thing. fantastic. You, you get a photo op and an autograph with each person, and you get like a signed poster, and then like you get you know your ticket to the show or whatever. It's like less than an hour from my house. Just so, the, Bischoff I, and Haku would be worth it. Uh, I, I I told Daniel as much as I love Haku, I want to go test my toughness out. Do you, what's the over under? Do I last ten seconds or five seconds if I go after and try to test it against Haku? Uh, well, if you start running, I would say seven seconds. I can't run with my leg, you know that, so it's over for me in five seconds or less, probably. Yeah, exactly. you know, I'm just teasing. I'm, that's going to be a cool one there to, to go see. So, you know, so, so it's like one. a wrestling show, or is it just a convention? It's a little convention before, like a meet and greet they do, and then it's a wrestling show afterwards. They got like two gold okay. Scorpios going to be on it. Rock and Rolls Wrestling, Gangrel, a uh, bunch of them. Bischoff's going to be there, so that'll be worth it right there. How much coke do you think the Scorpio is going to do before the show? Uh, I think it's more like weed. I think he's going to okay. smoke a shit ton. He'll be probably out in the back there in the show and doing it. Regal stretched on Dragon. Is he going to tap him? Come on. He might tap him here. That looks like a painful move when he does that, doesn't it? God damn, yeah, it does. Mark Curtis, he's calling it right there. Boy, Regal is over with this crowd, bro. It's over. Oh, Sonny Ono's done with Ultimo Dragon now. Oh, wow. What, what's going on with Sonny Ono? Why would he do know. that to him? Bastard. Dude, loyalty is dead. The, the wish Hulk Hogan in the front row ain't too happy about it. Send this fucker back to England. Yeah, it was French fried potatoes. Sonny was just on a random kicks on everyone. It was a bad finish. Great to we go into a bad job by Ono. Yeah, that was kind of a shitty finish. You know, we just send that dragon back to North Korea. That son of a bitch. But sir, he's from Japan. Same thing. They all, they're all the same. It's all the same <laughs> over here <laughs> in Charlotte. Oh, he, he, he did not like Ultimo Dragon getting in the way there. Just started throwing out wheel kicks to everybody. With damn. With. With with all seriousness, Sonny Ono is a legit badass. So yeah, I don't know. Yes, I. Is he? Yes, dude. Like he's a karate master. Oh, okay, I'll take your word for it. So yeah, uh, he hit him with a good wheel kick there. It was all right. Oh, he did. And uh, you you know they're all the same because I was watching Tucker Carlson on Friday and he Brother, said he so. got some fucking retribution to him today. Booyah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, when Oh, Jesus. What's this that? woman fucking scares me. Uh, Luna Vashad, Jesus. Dude. You talk about badasses. Luna is definitely one. Oh my lord, look at look at that mug on her. And that yeah. voice that she would do. Uh, she sounds like she smoked 14 cartons of cigarettes. She's gotta put the thing up to her face. I like your dog nightmares. Today, oh. <laughs> Here comes Medusa. God, Medusa was a... Whew. She was a beaut back in, the, back in this time. Oh, without a doubt. Um, and you know that every single news corporation is, that is fair and honest... They always have to pay out seven hundred million dollars, eight hundred and seventy-five million dollars, actually, or eight hundred seventy-eight point five million dollars. Let's 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 get it right. Oh, good lord! And they're such an honest company that they that <laughs> there's another lawsuit where yeah. they're going to be having to pay out over a billion. Yeah, smart thinking, huh? Well, hey. You got people that buy into this bullshit. Daniel says, when you talk about chicks who look like freaks in the sheets, here's Luna. Luna would yeah. rock your world in, in, in the bedroom, I'm sure. She probably would. Yeah. But you aren't but, keeping up with her. But she but she but she'd probably she'd probably get a black eye. Oh. 
I'll tell you though, Medusa was uh, definitely one of my favorites as a kid. She was smoking. She's oh, yeah. a beautiful woman though. Without a doubt. And and uh Bischoff, uh he he admitted uh that uh that if he had a hall pass would from his Medusa? wife. Yep, it would have uh, been Medusa. Back in his time, I, I wouldn't have blamed him. Yeah. You got Lee Marshall on commentary. Oh, hell yes. Could Medusa have not gotten better like ring boots, though? She's got like those Asics wrestling shoes. I have no idea. Well, she wasn't making much money because she admitted that she never made more than $100,000 a year in professional wrestling in her entire career. Wow. Kind of sad, right? Yeah, she's one of the building blocks of women now being being able to make millions uh, like they do. Dude, that breaks my heart. Well, I think she uh, transformed it into something nice for her with all that monster truck stuff. Oh, yeah, because she she's like a two-time uh, monster truck champion from what I hear. <laughs> Medusa doing that first thing on that big contracts and storing that title in the trash. Yep. Yeah, Daniel, how'd that work out for her? It didn't work out too well. They really didn't do shit, though, with this women's division. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh, they didn't, and it's... Uh... How many matches with Bull Meccano has uh, Medusa oh, had? Oh, my Lord, probably. I think she's had at least like three or four at this point. <laughs> they did the hog wild match and the build up, and then they bring somebody in and they would just disappear. I think like yeah. this was Luna's one shot here. She came in. I think she was gone right after this too. Yeah. But I, but I think Luna and Medusa would have been two great women to build it around. There just wasn't any women to build it around this time other than that, other than a few of them. Yeah, I agree. Even when you watch their wrestling compared to the women that are out there now today, these two don't even come close. They look like shit compared to some of the, the female talent that's out there today. I gotta hate saying that, but yeah, you're right. I, I mean, that's just being honest. I mean, I, I always put right. over the old product all the time, in my opinion. Like, it really doesn't look that good when you see them. They call them pioneers and all that shit, and I, and I respect that, but the wrestling is not on par with a lot of the female... Dude, neither of these two could hold a candle. The fucking Charlotte Flair, Rhea Ripley, uh, you know, Ronda Rousey, Bianca Belair. Britt Baker. No, I'm not going to include Britt Baker in there. <laughs> she sucks in the ring. Uh, what about She's Thunder Rosa? Eh, Thunder's all right. She's sloppy. I, I'm not including any women in AEW. <laughs> Come on. She's not, man. They're not good in the ring. I like their characters for some of them. I think Britt yeah. Baker's a great character. And all that shit, but yeah, they're just not good in the ring. Oh my god, listen to her scream. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I thought Burfa Pay Faye was the perfect example of Hog Wild. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yes. Bertha. <laughs> oh, look at that guy standing up in the front row there. Yeah, that's right. You got America on you, Medusa. America, you tell this bitch to get out of here. <laughs> get her ass back in their kitchen. You don't like some taters. You don't like America. You can get out. No, he's loving Medusa right now because she's got that uh, fucking America thong on that she's rocking out. There you go. Dude, her ring gear is dreadful, though. <laughs> it's it is. so bad. It's cheap. Cheap is an understatement. It's like she went down to Joanne Fabrics and put some fucking sequins on an outfit and started rocking it out. <laughs> Just being honest and real here tonight. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and the thing How much is, coke do you think Luna snorted before this match? <laughs> she was railing lines with Lee Marshall at the college town in the back. That's why Lee's on commentary here. Woo. And then, she, and then she would walk up to Lee because of his mustache, and she would snort off his mustache and because of leftover. She wanted a damn mustache ride. <laughs> <laughs> She was wanting those mustache rides from Lee Marshall. That's right. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just right. Jose Lothario isn't happy at all in the front row as women weren't allowed in the ring in his day. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, what's up, Big Mike Lovin? What's going on, Mr. Lovin? How's Woo! it going tonight? Woo! We're in Charlotte tonight for some slamboree. Check out uh, WCWWrestling.com, folks, on the World Wide Web. I hear it's going to be a pretty big thing. Does the WWE own that? Uh, I don't know. I'm tempted to buy it. I'm no, serious. I'm, I'm sure somebody probably owns the rights to it. Oh, and she pins her with the German suplex. 
and the crowd is ecstatic, is ecstatic because this match is over. Oh, is she going to take her top off? Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. She going to throw this sequin thing to the crowd? Nah. She, she ain't making too much money here. She ain't chucking that to the crowd. Oh, yeah, yeah. I agree. But no, just, uh, you know, back in this day, they should have let the uh, women get uh, sponsorships. I think Joanne Fabrics would have been great for her. It would have been great for Medusa. <laughs> Not much is going on. Here, How are yeah. you doing tonight, man? My brother's from another month. Doing good, buddy. Boom. Hopefully you're doing good out there in good old West Virginia here. Damn, that song stuck in my head now. West Virginia, my home. Oh, damn it. You got to do it right. Country yeah. road, road, West Virginia. Home to the place where Medusa belongs. <laughs> West Virginia. Mountain Mama. Yeah. Luna's going to snort some coke. Off yeah. these mustaches. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is that... uh. West Virginia is one of the most beautiful mountain states out there, period. Oh, absolutely. Hey, speaking of legends, we got Mean Gene out here. Oh, what's going on in the hotline tonight, Chris? Mean my God, Gene! Please, no fucking flare promo right now. <laughs> mean oh, Gene's my. got the inside details on an interim champion. Ooh. Ooh. Call 1-800-909-CHRIS-9900. Kids, make sure you get your parents' permission before calling. It's only a uh, dollar fifty-nine per minute. Yes, we got some Macho Man. Oh yeah, yeah. dig it, Martin. Macho Man, shit in your hat. I'm shitting you. Uh oh, oh, there's Liz. Boy, Liz is looking great. Oh yeah, Miss Madness, Miss Liz. Makes you go banana. He's got that NWO shirt on backwards, though. Mm -hmm. Daniel says, on the hotline tonight, we will finally get the scoop of the drugs that Piper was on the other week. Yes. I don't think Michael P.S. Hayes was there at this time. He was Doc Hendricks, Mr. Loving. Oh. Uh, he he definitely wasn't here at this time. Wait, Michael P.S. Hayes. You really? Put that shit on, Martin. I'm out of here. <laughs> Damn it. I'm out of here. I want to see that furry redneck on my screen. <laughs> In the damn, in the damn uh, Confederate flag, I'm out of here. You're on your own for the rest of the night, if that's the case. I don't want to see him. A uh, furry redneck. <laughs> I love it. That could be like his gimmick, the furry redneck. The furry redneck. redneck. I'm telling you. Look at this kid. Tradition bites. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mike says, I love provoking it. I know you do, Mike. You always love provoking that shit. Oh, yeah. And uh, it leaves me with haunted memories for like a week straight. I won't sleep. The, it, just imagine uh, just Doc Hendricks just randomly showing up to your house just singing Bad Street. That would be awesome. I would say that. Look <laughs> at the guy in the, with the bowl cut in the suit right behind Macho with his hands up in the air. Does this crowd give you a run for Saginaw? Jesus, this is they're, they're they're Saginaw is a whole other level in Omaha. They're yeah. they're 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 getting there. Michael says haunted memories can be great. I don't know, Mike. Macho <laughs> man getting a big reaction like he and only he and Brad attitude can get. That's straight. Dude, look at this guy in this suit behind him. Oh, Paige is coming out with that bent crutch. Uh oh. Uh oh. Bang. Dude, this crowd is hyped here. They're ready. Uh oh. Come on. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Better run. He's leaving Liz in the mm -hmm. ring. Nope. Dude, uh -oh. look at those cowboy boots that Paige is rocking out. Did he borrow those from you, bro? Uh, he did. Man, that was really oh. generous of you to let him borrow hey, those cowboy hey. boots. Hey, man, I'm, which I'm a very giving person. Uh, Chris has a few Bastion Booger Bertha Fay pictures, Michael. I do. More than a few. He has them up there all hanging around his room. He's got one on the ceiling. I don't know why he's got this big poster of her on the ceiling. Hey, hey, just uh, she gets me going. Hey, everybody likes what they like, right? Exactly. What about Bertha makes you the happiest? Is it her dimples? No, just that sexy smile. 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, my God. All right. Who do you take here? Okay. What's that? What, what, what's that? Uh, the, the, the Mary game? You know? Mary Kill Fuck? Yeah, Mary Kill Fuck, right? Yeah. yeah. Bertha Faye, Miss Elizabeth, and uh, let's see. Bertha Faye, Miss Elizabeth, and Luna Vachon. Uh, Mary Elizabeth. God damn this stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, F Bertha. Um, and what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, <laughs> and kill Luna. I'm just saying. You'd F Bertha? <laughs> yes. Well, Miss Elizabeth would be my wife, so but just uh, saying. That doesn't yeah. mean you're getting any. <laughs> That's we need true. Michael PSA's picture so he can send it to me to put in my office. I don't know about that. Oh, my sweet Bertha Faye. <laughs> what words could I ever possibly say? Oh, Lord. Dude said Verge had to make a pay-per-view appearance. Buy rates just went up. Oh, and you would oh. rather have Miss NWO. Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah. by the way, um, how do you think Virgil is handling the whole news with the DiBiase family? I don't know. <laughs> they ain't looking too good. Prayers for his family right now. This is this very difficult time for them. <laughs> they, ripped the, they, they ripped the welfare system of Mississippi off, but they're going through a real difficult time as they have uh, been arrested Fuck and they're facing five years in, in prison each. Oh, Buff's getting smacked there with that crutch. Verge! Oh, shit! Good Lord! Ow! Verge just earned his $150 payday. Cold beer and hot sandwiches, ladies and, and gentlemen. Ooh, Scott Norton got in there and him with a fucking kidney Good punch. Good God! Jesus, I, there's another dude I would not want to fuck with in real life. Scott Norton. Oh, yeah, same here. That or Ice Train. So, oh, man, look at... Dude, Scott Norton looks like just somebody you wouldn't want to fucking piss off. Oh, yeah, I agree. Oh, Mike's going. Trish Stratus, yes. She's always there. Okay, John, your turn. He's going to give me options. Okay, give me these options, Michael. First one's Trish Stratus. Who do we uh -huh. Who's number two and three? Really? This is, hey, this is Mike's giving them out here. So, okay. Right. You know, I gave you a fair one. I gave you a hot one in there, Miss Elizabeth. I got All you. Right. All right, I'm waiting for the other ones, Mike. I'm already happy when I see Trish Stratus. Daniel says $150. All the meat sauce will make him feel better. He'll be hey, man. shit in the breadstick. Dude, starving in that. I mean, like, just fucking bathing in it. He's just fucking lapping it up. Lapping it up. Meat sauce all around, folks. Yummy baby. The American dream will join him with the meat sauce. Dude, Bischoff wants everybody out, man. Oh my god. Verge is getting escorted to the back here for some reason. He's not doing anything. Okay, okay, here we go. Fabulous Mula. Oh my lord. Jesus Ooh. Christ. <laughs> Woo! This is my stress. This is my little stress popper right here. I'm waiting for number three here. Okay, hold on. Here we go. This will make you laugh. There <laughs> All right, so I got to pick between Trish Stratus, Fabulous Moolah, and Betty White. I think Betty would make a great wife. I'm going to go with Betty as my wife. She seems like a wonderful person. There's going to be no uh, sexual relations, but we definitely will hang out and we'll watch some Golden Girls and, and, and chill. You know, yeah. no doubt about it. Uh, kill, Moolah's gone. She's out the door. <laughs> right, as soon as you put her up, I knew who I was taking out in this one. <laughs> and then the uh, the big F? No, no doubt about it. I got you. I'm going to be 100% stratified, okay? I got you. I'm going to throw that out there. All right, so this is Yuji Yamasoka. 
and the crowd just went mild. Yuji um, Yasaroka is here. Do you think that uh, Mr. Tony Khan was going through like his second pair of boxers as Probably. soon as he came out? Daniel says he thinks Betty White would make a great one-nighter. Probably. <laughs> she might back in her day. Who knows, Daniel? Daniel She's dead now, but yeah. adrenaline's winning the titles in Saudi. <laughs> Nothing spells the American nightmare, but like winning that title in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and here comes Ray Mysterio Jr. All right, so what did you think? You sent it to me, and Daniel sent it to me today about the thing with Chavo bashing on Mis uh, Ray Mysterio for keeping out the Eddie Guerrero name and wearing the band and all that. What, what do you think of that as we uh, get Ray Mysterio out here to take out uh, Yuji Yasaroka? I'm going to be honest with you. I think Ray's doing a phenomenal job with keeping the memory of Eddie alive. I feel like by doing this, this could have younger fans wanting to look up and see who Eddie is, and that can make a whole new generation of young fans for Eddie Guerrero. Chavo, I think, I don't know if, if he's just being bitter, angry, or what, but, dude, the fact that they're celebrating your uncle, does it fuck? I mean, it, it, I don't understand it, man. Yes, I feel bad for Chavo because he's the one that had to find Eddie, and, and freaking Eddie literally died in his arms, and, and which I know – Maybe it's causing him to have trauma. I don't know. I'm, I'm, but I'm just saying now. If it, now if it's a case of Chavo being reminded of something bad that happened, then I understand. But if he's just being like a dick, then 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 it's uncalled for. What about you, John? I think Chavo needs to bring Pepe back and get some love to him. Yeah, because he is a uh, he's a bitter guy lately. Yeah, he needs to get Pepe back and get some pep in his step again. Bring his old friend back, get some laughs out from him, or, or whatever he's doing. How many times have you said, "Man, I'm excited to check out that Chavo Guerrero match"? Uh, the only one I was super excited about was anything with Pepe in it. There you go. Pepe was awesome. Pepe 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 made me love Chavo Guerrero back in the day. What do we want to see? Chavo and Hornswoggle for the nine millionth time. With yeah. a great match, what, what was it? Kane versus Chavo for the ECW title that lasted 10 seconds at WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. I mean, Kerwin because... White, yes. See, Kerwin White, I can dig. You know, yes. the best part about Chavo was when he wasn't being Chavo, was when he was playing Kerwin White or Pepe, you know, when he was coming out with yeah. that was when he was good. He needs to just chill out and relax and realize mm -hmm. that people are celebrating his uncle's legacy. That was one of Tucker Carlson's favorite wrestlers. Remember, if it ain't white, then it ain't right. Yep. <laughs> Tucker's motto. Michael says he needs to bring back Nick Patrick, the best referee of all time. You're damn right. Wow. The greatest referee of all time, hands down. And World Championship Wrestling, maybe. Nope. I'm just saying. In wrestling no. history. Earl fucking Hebner, my friend. Earl Hebner is in the main event of Brad Attitude versus White Mike as the special guest referee, by the way, in the I Quit match. So and guess what? If he pulls another, uh, if he pulls a Winston Salem screw job, it's over for him. We're sending Earl the attitude gonna, army after him. Earl has done nothing but call it down the middle of his whole career. Yeah, he did. All right, he did. He better call it down the middle in Winston Salem. Speaking of screw jobs, were you able to watch the biography of Bret Hart? No, I did not. It was excellent. I've oh, seen man. like nine million documentaries on him through the years, and I just can't watch any more Bret Hart documentaries. I've seen it a million times. I, well, yeah, but Bret seems to be in very good spirits when when it comes to his his uh, legacy and everything else. Like he's finally reaching that happiness about everything. I hope so I hope so. Daniel says uh, Earl will pay if he screws over Brad. The car is ready. <laughs> We're a quick <laughs> ride out to Winston Salem. All right. The attitude. Uh, the attitude posse is going to be taking him out. I I don't get here like why you put this match on. Like I love seeing Mysterio, but nobody knows who the fuck this kid is. I don't know. We're gonna put together a um, a uh, you put Yuji Yasuroka in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. That makes a lot of sense. Now he's yeah. screaming, and the crowd is like, "Yep." That's kind of like that uh, wrestler that was on uh, the uh, the AEW show last week with with Kenny Omega. Like the guy from Japan, I'm like, and Which the one? Fan this is AEW. They got about nine million of them. Was it Naito? I think the guy's I name was. I don't fucking know. 
but anyways, it's it you you, you know it's kind of like I why should I care? My wife's watching it with me. She's like, "Who the hell is this?" I'm like, "Yeah." So Michael Loving says, "Hey John, the Michael P.S. Hayes poster can cover the meth poster behind you. It cannot." Mike Dude, says, that'd be Katsuki great. Katsuki Takashida. Oh, damn, Mike! Good for you for getting that right off the bat. Takashida. Yuji in Japan almost makes no sense. <laughs> Suki take a shit uh? Suki Is that say take a shit? Is that say take it says take shit uh <laughs> Katsuki take shit uh <laughs> nothing will replace the Mets poster, uh the banner for the Mets back there, Mr. Loving. And I gotta say this, uh it, it, Tyrus is more entertaining than that guy. I don't know. Uh, uh, Yuji Yakaroda here is down on is down for the count here for a second. So what, what is with all the people in Charlotte here in the front row in the second row wearing <laughs> sunglasses inside? Do you all know right. why? Because their futures are so bright they got to wear shades. You know when you wear sunglasses inside like that, you're an incredible douchebag. In <laughs> Anybody that wears sunglasses inside like that is a with the ball cap backwards at the same time, right? You're an even bigger douchebag when you do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. And when you're wearing sunglasses inside, why? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Give me an answer, Chris. It's I... seven thirty p.m. or eight o'clock here. On a Sunday night in Charlotte, do you think the fucking sun's out in the arena? No. Is it blinding no. you? Is your star that bright? I don't know. But how would you rate their stars? Zero? Okay, zero. I got you. Again, one of those. There you go. Yuji Nagata is still in New Japan? Oh, my God. Well, Great Muda just retired, Mike. He, he's he's retired finally. He's like 90 years old and just retired. So that's a good great thing. The great Muda, me and John have nothing but the utmost love and respect for it. The guy was an actual legend. He um, gave the greatest Hall of Fame speech of all time. It took less than 10 seconds. I don't know English very well. Thank you. <laughs> yes. It was great. Because Tyrus uh, is less entertaining than Brackus. Yep, I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You don't like the Funkasaurus, Daniel? Come on. Oh, my so God. Call my mama. Well, well uh, Ric Flair's speech at the Hall of Fame. It wasn't was, even about him, but he made it, it about, about him. Player. Oh, nice <laughs> kick there by Yuji Yakaroka. What do you think about Ric Flair's comments saying that he loves Vince McMahon no matter what he does? Sure. Or he loves do you him th- as long as he's giving him a paycheck. I think you just read my mind. I think yeah. Rick is kissing his ass because of money. He needs that money to go get some more gray goose. Janice is Brad's attitude light burns so bright in AML. I'm gonna wear double sunglasses. <laughs> God damn. Yes. Oh. Woo! Woo! We're on fire here tonight. I'm telling oh, you. Yeah. Oh, this is such a fun show. My Dude, this, so... this Yuji Yakaroka has one hell of an awesome mullet, though. He does. And oh, that's nice about move it. there by Yuji Yakaroka. And that's about it, because honestly, I have no interest in this match. Yuji Yakasaki. He's going here. Yokohama. Yokohama mama. Yeah. The crowd just is so not into this match. And it's not for a lack of trying from these two. These two. It's just the fact that nobody has built this up. Dude, wish wish Hulk Hogan in the front there with the mustache is so not into this. Yeah. They got two of these, these Asian fellas on this show again. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing here? Well, this is the thing. This one fella said that he was from... Uh, this one feller says he was from Cuba, and then this other one said he's from Puerto Rico, and and the other one said he was from Mexico. Hell, they're all the same. <laughs> Michael <laughs> says, "What do y'all think of Vince McMahon's stash?" Oh Daniel God, says, I think Etch a Sketch can do a better job than Vince did. <laughs> <laughs> I can't beat that one right there. Remember, okay, remember like those uh, like those old school like nineteen twenties villains that will like yeah. tie like their yeah. uh, damn. It looks like he belongs on an episode of fucking Peaky Blinders. <laughs> 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 oh, Jose's uh, so bored he took his piss break with Yuji's match. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? About, so, so like with Vince's new girlfriend, he's like, do you, do you like the stash? She's saying, yeah, you just sold the WWE for nine point whatever billion dollars in your pocket and half of that. I'm going to love anything you tell me. You're mm-hmm. the genetic jackhammer 
It's great mustache. Yes, Daddy. That yes. shoe polish looks wonderful in your hair, too. <laughs> Who do you think did it better? Rudy Giuliani or Vince McMahon with the hair dye? Wow, that's a hard one. <laughs> Bro, did you, man, that's like telling me to pick between my two kids and which one I like the best. Those are both incredibly bad ones. So, <laughs> and I know a thing about a bad dye job once in a while on, on, on my facial hair, too. So I've done that before, too. So I'm not immune to this. I, I'm just sitting over here and just being straight. I've done it, too. Okay. I've accepted my gray in my hair now, but I've done it, oh, too. And, and I'm yeah. starting to get gray myself. So I understand. I've accept, I, I accept it, Chris. And I accept no. I did some bad dye jobs back in the day, too. All right. I got my you. God. Nothing is as bad as, as Pancho Villa McMahon and fucking Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> when he was sweating out that shoe polish in his head, it's just the best. <laughs> Oh no 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 no! We missed the shoe, Mike. I'm glad we cracked you up, man. And he booked the wrong four seasons. He booked a fucking uh, what's it called? A, a landscaping company's uh, storefront. He's a gem. <laughs> He's a gem, brother. How is he? You're from New York. Yes, How I the am. hell did he go from being such a well-respected hero? To uh, one of the biggest jokes in America, when you and you know he was he was fearless back in the day, bro. He took down the mafia. I know. I actually respected him before. He took down the damn mafia, man. You know, when you align yourself with crooks, that's what happens. And when you start believing into the delusion, you know. Let's be honest, though. He was never a stellar uh, person. You know, deep down under, his Did wife he had marry cancer. His cousin? No, he was. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he did. I don't. I don't think so. But his wife had cancer, and he was cheating on her. You know. Oh my God! Yeah, and, uh, he did. So it wasn't like he was a stellar personality, man. And you throw a couple, you throw money and fame at people, and that's what happens sometimes. Yeah, I agree. Yuji Akaroka here never got any of his. Dude, this he is match is going on way too long. Oh my lord! High risk moving. Nobody cared. Okay, you can't Mike get him is... on the outside, Yuji. Get him in the ring. And Mike is speaking truth tonight. His last Same. message was the. Me this is a message of the night right here. Mike, how dare you say he had better messages no. matches than Brad Attitude? Mike. No. Mike. 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 I'm, brother, I am on your side with that, brother. Tom Stone a legend. Oh. Tom Stone is a legend. Daniel says, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Mike, I might have to make a trip down to <laughs> West Virginia right here and to give an attitude beatdown on you. For that, for saying that, nobody has better matches than Mr. Brad. Okay, yeah, Tom Stone well, well. is a legend, but by God, I don't know. Daniel says Giuliani could never take down the real mafia. Sting, Angle, Booker, Nash, and Steiner would never let Rudy survive. The main event mafia. That's Damn right. right. Um, you know what? Like with uh, me moving up to Pittsburgh this summer, guess what? I'm gonna be right by West Virginia. So uh, me and Mike, we can all hang out. We can have a we can have a West Virginia slobber knocker match. You and yes. Mike Lovin versus me and Daniel with a Brad attitude on a pole match. Yes. Oh, dude. And uh, Russo could book it. Daniel says that uh, Tom Stone, Brad attitude, one is a champion, one slipped on hair grease. <laughs> that was not Tom's fault. Fucking Bret Hart just, yeah. He, ru he ruined his career. He did. Um, and like, and, and uh, to all of the renegades out there that watch this, uh, we're still recovering from the financial loss of me blowing all that money on the superstar show. Wait till you see the next episode. <laughs> wow. Are you serious? What the next superstars? I had to dip into my personal savings account to get some of these talents out here because <laughs> you had to blow the budget for the year. The show must go on. Wait till you see it. Okay. Cold, cold beer and hot sandwiches. Okay. That's what I had oh, to do. Oh, yeah. Daniel says, please. And I never say this about rain matches. Please end. Jesus yeah. Christ, this match is going on it's forever. It's going on forever. Okay, UG, nobody gives a shit. Go home. <laughs> God damn, this is bad. I would rather watch Kevin Sullivan right now. Dude, Bobby Heenan's commentary here is making it, man. He's ready for this end, too. <laughs> do you hear him? He, you yes, got hurt. Dude, Tanae is doing his best job right here. To like try to push this out, but even today can't sell this. Uh, he, he's he stole Mr. Cactus Jack's finisher. Look at Mark Curtis standing up against Yuji Yakamoka. 
He's saying, please go home. You going on a cruise, Big Mike? I'll tell you, man. Very nice. Styling and profiling. You going to head down to uh, the Dominican? You going to head down to Jamaica? Where are you going, man? Where are you looking at? Head out in the Caribbean. Have some fun. You can go down to Cozumel, go down to Mexico. I'm going to Mexico. I, I'm going down to Mexico and get some good cocaine from the cartels. We go get that good shit and we bring it back to Charlotte. Woo! Yeah. Dude, this match is horrendous. Ray, we love you. but Ray is doing the best he can with this guy. They got no chemistry. I'm just wondering how they speak to... They do spots with the language barriers. I don't know. Ray just got about kicked in the teeth there, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're speaking too well to each other here with these spots. Dear Lord! Oh, nice drop kick by Ray. Please end in this match. Now. Which I would, which I wish the Mountie would come out like the shock stick. I'm the Mountie, all American boys. Somebody get the hamburger, the hamburger from the third row in there to end this. Thank you, God. This match is over. All right. West Coast pop. There we go. Oh, Jesus Very Christ. Nice. It's over. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Um, I just keep saying this sucks instead of calling spots. He's pissed. Would you rather watch this over and over or watch Public Enemy? Public Enemy in that one match with high energy was pretty entertaining. Okay. Well, brother, like, we're, wait, are we watching them tonight? I don't think they're on tonight. Okay. I think our last match of the evening is Glacier and Mortis next. Oh, God. It might be. I'm not sure. Oh, no, we got Malenko and uh, Jarrett's our last match. Yeah, straight up Malenko and Jarrett. That could be really good. That'll be our final match for uh, part one is is Malenko and Jarrett. It's crazy. The older the – wait, hold on. Round of poor carnival. Me and Chris almost ran into each other when I ran back. Metal Beach Fusion. Glacier is horrible. I agree a thousand percent. Yeah, there you go. You have a good time, man. Glacier is horrible, Mike. He is beyond dreadful. Good, good. He's coming out next here, and he's an asshole. So I mean, Pretty much. Here comes uh, uh, James Vandenberg and Mortis now. Look at this eerie music coming out. Where's Wrath? I don't know. Glacier saying, "You thought Yuji sucked? I got this." <laughs> and. uh I would say, honestly, probably the most naturally gifted wrestler in this whole show is this man right here. And it's a damn shame. Because damn good. Oh, yeah. And uh, for the in, for the people that don't, don't know what I'm talking about, Mortis is actually Chris Canyon. And freaking Canyon was an outstanding talent. It's just... It, it, it's just, unfortunately... He he was held back because of a lot of people being fucking ignorant assholes. So did they do a dark side of the ring on him yet? Yeah, they did. Okay, I thought they did. And um, and unfortunately, um, I have respect for the Undertaker. I do, but he did Canyon wrong. What did he do to Canyon? Uh, remember, uh, I think it was in two 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 thousand three. Um, one of his, uh, l- l- last appearances, he came out of a huge box and was dressed up as, uh, the guy from the culture club. God damn. I can't think of his name. Do you really want to hurt me? Yeah, yeah. And basically the undertaker beat the living shit out of him. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, there's a lot of people that think because they knew he was, he was gay that they used that to humi- humiliate him. Hmm. So definitely not cool. No. Daniel says, uh, plus he was Jimmy King's stunt double. He's a legend. Whoa, whoa, Jimmy King. Hold on. Jimmy did not have a stunt double. You ain't ever seen no Jimmy King. No. Jim. Oh boy, here comes it later. I will rule you. I, I will re- rule you. First, let me get another beer. <laughs> it's free on YouTube right now too. Did you're you welcome. know that? Yes, you're you're welcome. Did you pay uh, for the rights for that? I did. I yeah, did. What a good guy you are. Thirteen dollars. Jam up guy of the year. 
Thirteen dollars. The 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 WWE said, "Fuck it, you can have it." Oh man, <laughs> he didn't he didn't take long on this entrance here. Took about three minutes. Two, I'm guessing minutes the Ray- there. This is going to be a quick match, I think. Do you know why? Because the Rey Mysterio match is it, it, it up all the over. time. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely. snowing. It's still snowing in there. They didn't even get through the snow. The crowd is like here in Charlotte. We ain't ever seen snow. And this, What's uh, this white shit? And like the Hulk Hogan's guy. The, the Hulk Hogan guys. This isn't pure Colombian cocaine, god damn it. This ain't that good snow. This isn't. So, yeah. I mean, it's snowing in Charlotte. is like, uh, you know, having spring break in Toledo, Ohio, like AEW did last year. <laughs> or Cleveland, whatever it was. Cleveland. <laughs> Nothing spells spring break like uh, fucking spring, Cleveland. Spring break on the lake, I think it was called. So yeah. break in Cleveland. There you go. Break on the lake. That snow better not land on Jose. Daniel says, <laughs> "No, no." Well, They'd be pissed. Just some vulgar fans here sticking up their middle fingers at the crowd. You know, in the crowd all the time at the camera. All right, we get it. You got middle fingers. Oh no! Here he comes again. No. Oh. Here comes Wrath. Are those bats on his uh, jacket? Yes. Oh, okay. That's pretty tremendous. Because he's batshit crazy. James came out with his helmet for some reason. I don't know why he's carrying his helmet out, but he's got it. God, Brian Clark had such a good look. He really did. He's another guy. If you just take a look at him, he 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 just he screams like professional wrestler when you look at him. Oh yeah, and I think. Do you think Brian he, he could have been like a believable world champion? I think if he would have uh, maybe been able to do some things a little bit differently in the ring, maybe, and maybe speak a little bit better, yeah, it could have been. Well, hell, you look at Brock Lesnar. The guy can't even do a promo to save his life. A, yeah. I disagree. I think he's hilarious in his promos. Really? I think he's hilarious. I love Brock promos. I think he, I think they're fantastic. Wrath is just mad he had to do anything with Glacier. I don't blame you, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is like what three weeks in a row where every time Glacier comes out, they just come out and do the same thing and beat him up and yes. choke him out a little bit. Yes. Is and that the crowd has not given one shit less about it at any no. place at any place they've been at any point in time? Did Bischoff say that it was his idea to do the like the Mortal Kombat thing? Yeah, and he said it was a terrible idea and he wishes he didn't do it. <laughs> he said it many times. The you got the the armadillo uh helmet. You know, it hit at the wrong time. Let's be realistic. It was just, if it would have been maybe a couple years earlier, it might have fit better over there. But 1993, 1994, it would have been perfect because that was the height of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, it just wasn't the right time. You know, it was about two, three years too late. Two, two, three years too late. This is pretty simple. Yeah. uh, Good God. And the crowd just does not care. Do you think James Mitchell uh, owns the Mortis mask? I don't know. I have no idea, to be honest with you. Because I like the mask. The Mortis look wasn't that bad. Like, the Wrath look wasn't that bad either. It just just didn't fit at this time frame. They were still trying to do these cartoonish, goofy gimmicks when the reality was, you know, people were into the fun stuff. They were into... You know, the NWO, they were into Degeneration X shortly after this. They were into Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, they were into that type of stuff. One of my favorite gimmicks was the uh, Leprechaun gimmick that Sarge did. The Lepre- Is that Ernest the Cat Miller? Oh, Jesus Christ. He said, we got a fan in the ring. Jesus, look at those kicks by the cat, man. Uh, the guy on truth. The cat was a legit badass. Absolutely, he was. Yeah. But nobody knows who the hell he is. Yeah. It's not like he was a world renowned, uh, you know, star. People weren't watching karate and shit, you know, on T on ESPN. Did you oh, watch yeah. the karate championship last weekend? Ernest the cat was on there. Nobody knows who no. this guy is. He just no. comes in and starts doing spin kicks, and Tony goes, We got a fan in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Now the cat is trying to call him out here. The which Ernest Miller uh, was in uh, one of like my favorite uh, movies, uh, which was The Wrestler. Oh yeah, wasn't he the guy that took on um, uh, Mickey Rourke at the end there? Yep, 
Yep. What what'd they call it? What was his what was his thing in that? The um he was the Iranian. He, the, Ayatollah, the Ayatollah or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody better call his mama. <laughs> Glacier, uh somebody better call his mama, pick Glacier and drop him off. <laughs> so oh, somebody call my mama. They're all the same. That shit was real funny though when he would uh when he would do the cat later on in WCW. Oh god, yeah. The James Brown dancing that he would do. I straight up, uh, the cat, extremely talented guy, full of charisma. I think the WWE, like, they shit the bed with him because, like, they brought him in and he was an announcer and everything else. I think that he's got a good voice and I think that he's entertaining as hell. Reality is, though, this was Bischoff bringing in his buddy to come in and get a paycheck. Oh, yeah. Because I think Ernest the Cat was like his personal karate instructor for his kid or something like that. Yep. Like, he, he he was he was bringing one of his buddies in here to get a nice payday on Ted Turner's dime. And I love me some Eric Bischoff. I'm just being real. Yeah. Gene, I want to talk to Ernest Miller or perhaps one of the ring attendants. Or Ric Flair. Please, let's not get a Ric Flair promo here tonight. Mean goddamn Gene. All right, I got 10 minutes, and then they're going to give me a restart here like it always does here when we go on late. Oh, shit. I told you it was coming. Somebody better call my mama. Mean by God, Gene. Because in 10 minutes, I'm going to re- I'm going to get rebooted. Every I don't know. I got to figure out how to get, how to switch this out, man. Yeah. That's why when we get started late, I always know it's going to happen. It's all right. Automatic reset. Oh, yeah, here we go. A little double J now. Well, tonight was one of those nights where I had to stay at work because somebody got fired. Your ass is fired. Yeah. Well, and this person got fired because they had an extensive history of stealing uh, sodas, potato chips, gum, and just stupid shit. Wow, that's wonderful. I just don't understand why people just, it's not worth it. Miss Deborah's here. Looking at they got food stamps, always. by God. Yeah. Look at little Double J coming out here. He said, don't touch me, you you Charlotte slap nuts. Yes. Don't I, touch Double J. It's crazy. I could not stand Jeff at this time, but now with his older shit, he's genius. I wouldn't Do call you, him a genius at this time at all. No, I'm talking about now. He's, he, he definitely is like a fine wine. He got better with he got better with age, in my opinion. He's one of the best heels in wrestling now. He is the last outlaw, by gosh. Yeah. Look at him. Come on. Step aside. Let's see that strut. The Jackie Fargo strut. Yeah. Hey, that fuck Jackie Fargo, that drunken bastard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Jackie Fargo on that impact uh, show that we watched when he was shit faced was tremendous. Yes. One of those early ones. Oh, oh crap! Should we mention Impact? They might sit over there and put a copyright violation against us for mentioning their name. Oh Jesus Christ! Because yeah. the other ninety thousand people in this world that watch their 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 product are really uh, jumping up and down for it. Uh, you're you're uh, stretching it, buddy, by saying ninety thousand. Oh, well, they got about twenty or thirty now. And what were they on Pop TV? I think it's Pop. T- no, no, no. They're on Access. 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 Yeah. Sorry. They went from Spike TV to Pop TV to the Hunting Channel. Ooh, they've got their fingers on the sensor button, Daniel says. That great yeah. value soda gets you every time, Daniel says. It does. It does. No, um, just I don't understand. But it is what it is. Uh, and with Impact Wrestling, I just feel like uh, I, I – Oh, yeah, by the way, like their new world champion is Steve Macklin. Who? I think he was part of the WWE, like with like the Lost Sons. Steve Macklin. Steve, uh, yeah. Remember the Lost Sons, and it had like no. the. <laughs> no, the Lost Sons. <laughs> that one guy that like. You said racist... his name is Steve. Oh, um, yeah, that Jackson Riker guy, right? Y- yeah, yeah, he he was in the group with Jackson Riker. All right, so when you put in Steve, Steve Macklin doesn't even come up here. Steve Madden, Steve Martin, Steve uh, Madden Boots, Steve Madden Kids, Steve Martin Movies, Steve Marriott, whoever that is, Steve Mariucci, who hasn't been a a coach in about 20 years, 
Steve Macklin, the wrestler. All right, let's see who he is. Let's see. Who, who is Steve Macklin? This is their champion? Yes. How have oh, the mighty Lord. fallen? Steve Macklin oh, on being motivated by his WWE release. <laughs> you want to get his cell phone number? It's out there, folks. You give him a holler. I guess Jackson Riker and uh, Wesley Blake uh, with uh, him, the Forgotten uh, Sons. They were definitely they forgotten. Were they yeah, they were yeah. forgotten real fast when they got on the main roster. And, he's married well, to Deanna Perazzo, Daniel said. Well, I guess he's doing something right. Yeah, he must be doing something right if he's scoring a little Deanna. I barely know what's going on with Impact because of social media. I guess they brought back Nick Aldis in too. Well, I don't think people have been lining real up to hire Nick Aldis too much. And I think I, that's a shame. I, I think it's a damn shame because Nick is extremely talented. I'm real surprised he doesn't get picked up anywhere big time. Do, do you think it's his attitude? I mean, which I don't know him personally. I don't either. I mean, this is my assumption. Maybe he's got a shit attitude. Who knows? I he have no he, idea. He's one of the highlights of the first few seasons of the NWA for us. I re- Yeah, he was tremendous. I really have no idea why he's not. Maybe it's his own choice. Maybe he's not got any offers. Maybe his asking price is too high. I have zero idea, Chris. I can't understand it unless he's not somebody that's easy to work with. Because honestly, just imagine, I mean, like the matchups he could have within the WWE or hell, fucking AEW he could with all anywhere. that. Dude, just imagine a Daniel Bryan versus Nick Aldis match. It's a shame to, like, that you see him. You know, he stuck with the NWA. He was loyal to those bunch of schmucks for so long over there. You know, probably didn't make half of what he could have made on if he would have gone somewhere bigger. Yeah. Daniel says he'll always be Brutus Magnus to me. I like the whole Magnus gimmick. I thought it was pretty good when he did it. I remember seeing some of that. The British wasn't invasion? He, yeah. Wasn't he in the uh, main event mafia too? Yes. Yes. He was in like the uh, scrub version of the main event mafia, right? Yeah. The uh, last version of it. Uh, and I think uh, just Nick showed he was a main eventer at that time, just flat out exquisite talent and and he's married to mickey james i see i'm not a mickey james fan i never have been are you serious never i think, I think she's, she sucks in the ring i think she's okay. blah and boring i would have to say honestly the two most overrated females i've ever seen in the fucking ring and i'm not saying this because i want to be on like the hate train but the bella twins you, you ain't lying about overrated when you come to them they're fucking hot garbage. I'm sorry, but I know that are. might give me heat though with Mickey, but you know, like with the you know, people love Mickey. If you love Mickey, great. I've never been a fan. Never liked her that much. Okay. I thought, I thought she was real sloppy in the ring, and you know, I never really thought that she was that entertaining. And that's just me. I got you. Nothing I against her personality or anything like that. She seems like a, a very nice person. From I got you. And she's definitely done some great stuff, but yeah. Malenko beating Jared up to I'm gonna take your spot in the horseman soon. Yeah. You forget about that. That that's coming up with Malenko here in the very near future. Oh yeah, it's and coming they, up in '98, uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, Malenko was the subject of our first episode of Forgotten Icon. So uh, I still have it in the archives, waiting to release it. We gotta shoot a second episode. Ricky the Dragon will be on number two. Yes, he will. And uh, and the thing Jose is, Jose Lothario is bored in the front right there. Look dude, at we dude, we should do a Forgotten episode on uh, on Jose Lothario. I think I that think we're going to find many great matches with him. What about Sarge? I think we should do one on Sarge. What ever happened to Sarge these days? He's on social media. I mean, he? he yeah, he uh, likes my stuff on Instagram. So, uh, okay. Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne Bruce. Um, honestly, I have no issues with the guy. I think I like uh, about Sarge. I do too. He's a oh, jam yeah. up guy. He is. It's a so, jam up guy, man. The jam up guy. Right, I'm gonna talk like warning, Stu Hart. Just your fair warning. In two minutes, you're taking over, motherfucker. I'm gonna I'll be back, I'll be back in lickety split. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign myself off now, so I can hopefully get a jump start on this. So I'll be back. I'm I'm gonna do commentary like Stu Hart. And that is just Stu Hart. Yeah. Stu Hart says I'm gonna I'm gonna go you and I'm gonna stretch you in the dungeon. I'll be back. I'm going to stretch your boo. Anyways, all right. All right, guys. John signed it off, so it's me. I'm flying solo. 
We're going solo, riding solo. Anyways, okay, so right now we got Dean Malenko in the middle of the ring with Jeff Jarrett. He's got a uh, leg vine on him. Will Jarrett tap? Or will the power of the T be enough to gain the strength needed to continue to fight? Because, you know, you don't want to be like some of the people that we've had to deal with to where you're – where like the winner's purse is cold beer and hot sandwiches. You don't want that. But yeah. You are correct, Daniel. You are correct. And they say that uh, puppies, they are the friendliest animals out there. So yes. Stu, what? was one in a calorie for stretching people too wide and not apologizing afterwards. I love it. It's too hot, baby. I'm still hot. I'm going to stretch you. No, no, no. But in all seriousness, uh, speaking of Stu Hart, I was watching the uh, Bret Hart biography and uh, it was absolutely outstanding. Um, I'm so happy to see Bret in a good place when it comes to accepting his legacy and accepting the way he dealt with uh, like the hand they got dealt. I mean, which is unfortunate, like the majority of his family died and it sucks, man. But the thing is, is that Brett, he's, he's become accepting of it. And the fact is, is that he is um, with arms wide open, like with his grandkids and with his kids and everything else. And just being, he's loving life right now. So I'm, I'm really happy for Brett Hart. But, like, that guy's gone through so much tragedy. Um, and I don't blame him for being bitter. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't blame him for being bitter one bit because I've lost people that are extremely valuable to my life. And you're not going to get over it very quickly. So I don't blame him. All right. So All right, here we go. So, like, we got the abdominal stretch. J E double F has got the uh, the abdominal on uh, Dean. Mean Dean. I think Dean Malenko sh should have been a uh, interviewer, and Ric Flair would come out. Mean Dean Malenko. That'd have been great. Jeff Jarrett, baby. Oh, God, here we go. This match is, uh, good Lord, they're attempting to do the abdominal stretch for like the 48th time. Oh, God. Oh, beautiful clothesline. That's a freaking classic right there in my hole. Anyways, you talk about shit female wrestlers. Yeah, Nia Jax. Anyways. All right. Hold on. <laughs> come on, Daniel. Shitting all over Flair. Flair didn't need another reason to come out and cut another promo. Dean at his size really needed charisma to outweigh, and it just wasn't in the cards. I agree a thousand percent. Dean is an absolute outstanding talent. I believe he's one of the greatest technical wrestlers in the history of the business. It's just the guy didn't have, not saying that he didn't have the hit factor, but, but he, he was lacking in the charisma department. Um, and I think that limited him greatly because honestly, I think Dean even at being at the size he was, he would have been a believable world champion. And I know some people are like, what? Yeah, I think Dean would have been a believable world champion. So, uh-oh. Jarrett's complaining about uh, his hair. 
Seriously, let go of my hair. The NWO, baby. The four or five guys are going to stomp you out, baby. Hold on, here we go. We had Edge taking clothes. Oh, that's true. I remember that. I, I think that was in the year 2000, um, SmackDown. I remember that. Uh, apparently, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. Uh, Dean beat her, and then she had to. Uh, she she had to go on a date with him. I remember that. Oh, beautiful! This is a really good match. Oh, Texas Cloverleaf, one of my favorite finishers. Beautiful, small package, and Dean kicks out, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. This is a very competitive match, guys. Seth Rollins? They are turning it up right now to quote Bobby Heenan. And hold on. I'm going to do this for uh, Mike. I think uh, I, I, I think we're clear right now for, for at least a couple minutes. There we go. Oh, motherfucker. Did he delete that? Yeah, I think he deleted him. Here we go. Oh, beautiful. Here we go. I I got to do this as a tribute to my Here we go. Yeah. How do you like that, guys? Soak it in. Soak that in. What in the piss is that doing on the screen when I come back? What in the hell is that? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. That Dude. needs to be in every home, Daniel. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I come well, back a, on, I get rebooted, and I got Doc Hendricks' mural on my. Uh, on hey, my hey, would you prefer that or the other one? Yeah, I'll take that one. Okay, there you go. I'll let you slide on that one, Chris. This match has been very competitive. Oh, right. we got the figure four going on. Uh, we're talking about the Dean Lita feud from 2000. That was fun, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. And it was then. Fun. And, and then it led to like the hotel room, and then like the uh, the Hardy Boys jumping. Uh, Dean, Dean was great back in the day, and that c created the uh, ladies man gimmick. I remember that. He was the ladies man, all right. He wasn't yeah. the ice man. He was the ladies man. And and um and a fun fact: the uh, ladies man theme song that he used uh, was eventually recycled to become Cesaro's um, uh, first theme in the WWE. I can't wait till we get to uh, the fat chick thriller, Mike, when Mike Awesome was the fat chick thriller. Oh, God, I can't wait either. I'm coming for you, boy. I'm coming hard. Thank you. I don't care. You come in my face, I'm going to fight you. All right. <laughs> you always put up these fucking silly sound bites, man. You always find <laughs> random shit. I love it. All day long, I'll be getting these things from Chris people just saying, just so. Uh, to pull the uh, onion back a little bit, Chris will be sending me these random YouTube crazy videos, these crazy, uh, you know, different things that he finds oh. all the time. Half the oh, time, yeah. I don't understand half of them, but <laughs> he sends them to me nonetheless. Well, well, which unfortunately, they're not done with context, usually. Context is king, all right? Yeah, I agree. Context is king. All right. who, who are you picking here to win this, Jared or Malenko? Who's going to pull out the big victory here? I think Jared's going to win by cheating. I think we're going to have Malenko. I think Jared's going back to the WWF soon. Nefarious means he was bouncing around like every year to to back back and forth between the two. I don't blame him. Hey, we're going to get uh, shooting glasses slap nuts here soon. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Texas clover leaf by uh, 
if my, I my favorite get... finisher all the time. I always say that for submission moves is the Texas Cloverleaf. Mongo's had enough of the way uh, Deborah and Jared keep looking at each other. Yep. When whenever your kids misbehave, we're pulling back the onion more. You put them in a Texas Cloverleaf. Slap that son of a bitch on them. They ain't going to be acting up in school the next day. Nope, they don't. Ain't happening, folks. Trust me. Ain't happening at all. Chris has been doing that for years. His kids are like well oiled machines. Well, yeah. Uh, my son uh, yesterday got honored. Uh, he, he's in the Honor Society. So, Congratulations uh, to young Yes. Kings. Yes. So I'm very proud of him. Wonderful. That's yes. That's a good thing, man. Oh yeah, he's in the ROTC program. Uh, he knows he's if he the... didn't, he knows if he didn't get those good grades, you're slapping that clover leaf on him. Exactly, that's his biggest fear. It's like, oh god, dad, with that clover leaf. Here he goes again. He's gonna put the clover leaf on me and think it hurts. Yep. Dear God, the clover leaf actually does hurt. You put it on somebody. You put them on a right. It's like the sharpshooter. You know? Which I which I tried to put on Bertha Faye, and it it, it just oh, didn't work out. That ain't working out too well for you. <laughs> And stand by at the end of the show. We're going to have a tremendous cameo uh, of the week this week that I found. Her her legs are like tree trunks. She don't bleed. She don't bleed blood, man. She's she's bleeding out gravy. <laughs> she's not gravy. Good God. You're going to love the cameo of the week. Let me tell you that, brother. Oh, God. Is this a death match? I don't know. Hold on. Ten falls do not count. What I miss here, Ellen. Mike Austin became the fat chick thriller getting near birth of Faye. They hear the Malenko music when Chris enters the house. They get right into their homework. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, shit. Dad's home. Hurry up. Get that math homework done. Exactly. They get that math homework done. Or the clover leaves coming out. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. We're gonna call. We're gonna call Aunt Bertha to come in here. Speaking of Haku, uh, to all the people out there, look up the Chris Jericho Haku Airport story. That's it's a tremendous story that Chris told on the uh, Broken Skull sessions about the people, the airport security fucking with Chris in the back, and then Haku comes storming back and starts jacking up all the uh, Acapulco security. <laughs> I want to go out and party with with fucking Haku. I want to just go to a place where, like, it's all the people you don't like. Oh, God, yeah. And just say, hey, Haku, all right? Cold hey, beer look. for the rest of the night. Okay. Go take them out. Come on. Uh, all right, brother. King Haku, go get them. Yeah. He'd make a perfect bodyguard. He played that great bodyguard gimmick for a while in uh, WCW when he first came in there. Uh, he did it for... Uh, uh, the uh, Colonel Rob Parker, the stud stable, or whatever they called him. Oh, yeah, I like that whole thing that he did with uh, Dusty and Dustin, and then they hit him with the chair. Yeah, like uh, I think it was Dusty or Dustin, one or the other, hit him with that wooden chair over the head and broke the fucking wooden chair right through his head. And then Haku just no sold that motherfucker like it was nothing and just stood there and then like hit him with the Tongan death grip right after that. Good lord, yes. I mean, you're not going to no-sell that, all right? You're getting a, a fucking wooden chair broken through your head, and you just yep. stand there like it's nothing. It, straight up, Haku is another breed, man. Um, this breaks my heart seeing this. What's that? With Benoit and, and uh, Nancy right there. Yeah, it's unfortunate when you see it. Haku it's got sad. hit by chairs as a child. <laughs> <laughs> use the pieces for firewood. <laughs> it's seriously, once again, I hate to say it, we always have to have like this uh, notice that we put out. Uh, we don't endorse anything that Benoit did uh, for like the last few days of his life, okay? We're just simply focusing on the man as a wrestler. So there you go. I'm not going to keep giving that disclaimer anymore. We said it enough. It's wrestling. We're talking about the wrestling version. I don't think we need to give that anymore. If you don't like what he did, nobody does. It's awful what he did. Okay. Doesn't okay. take away. I'm just saying, we've said it so many times. And anybody that thinks, you know, because you're endorsing his wrestling, that you're endorsing him as a human is a moron. So, yeah. you know, like the guy was a phenomenal in ring talent, one of the greats of yeah. all time. 
I just think that in his final days, it honestly, the guy had the brain matter of an 80 year old man whenever they, they tested his brain out. So he wasn't all there at the end at all. Nope. So yeah, definitely wasn't definitely wasn't. So it it was a shame to, you know, of course what happened, but it doesn't take away from the tremendous accomplishments that he had in the ring and all the great stuff that he did. And which I was watching a thing with Kurt Angle, and he says that it's a shame the WWE won't celebrate his favorite match of all time, which was the match from Royal Rumble 2003 with Benoit. So you can't really. It's hard. I know. You know I know. From their perspective, it's hard. You can't do it. You know. I mean, he was off the network for a while, wasn't he? Yes. But then you yeah. can't like completely erase this guy from history, no matter what people want to think. You just can't do it. Because he was involved in so much stuff. Just a ton. There were so many tremendous storylines that he had throughout the years. I mean, we got a year and a half of him versus Kevin Sullivan every friggin' other week. You know, every pay-per-view. Well, if they're to to every WCW pay-per-view and take him off of the damn thing. Well, if they're to censor that with Sullivan, believe me, it wouldn't break my heart. (laughs) No, no, not, not for me either. The first couple of matches was like, oh, okay, this is cool, fun. They got a lot of heat. That yeah. shit went on for two years. Ooh, I'm done. I'm done. It's like, all right, really? Dude, Ming's mullet is on fucking point. It sure is. A year and a half. It wasn't a decade. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Well, it could be like the Randy Orton John Cena feud. Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> Where it just went on for fucking ever. Apparently, Randy Orton and John Cena hold the record for most main event pay-per-view matches facing each other. They had a lot, I'll tell you that. that. That's for sure. That thing went on for a long time. Oh, yeah. What's your time stamp at, Chris? Uh, 13137. Right, 131.37. And I think after this match, we're, we're done with part one, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, this will be it for us here with Ming. I wasn't even going to go this long with them, but we did. Good God. Hit me with that timestamp one more time. 132. Oh, two. Boom. I'm right here. There you go. Ben Wall is in fucking tremendous shape, though, when you look at this guy. Look oh, at yeah. the guy in the yellow, man. What the fuck is going on with him? Wait, what happened? Look at the big dude in the yellow fucking uh, polo shirt and khakis there in the front row. He's sitting about three seats down from Lothario. About four or five seats down from Lothario. Oh, God. Ming needs to go over there and hit him with the Tongan death grip. Oh, Lord. Boy, these were two bruisers, though, when you put these two with one another. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I don't think they have very good chemistry. You know, Ming was never like a great in-ring worker by any means. Like he wasn't no. awful, but he just didn't translate too much. As crazy as this sounds, one of my favorite times to watch Ming for me, it was whenever he was in a tag team with Andre the Giant. The Colossal Connection. Yes. I thought they were excellent together. And and it was and this was during the time where friggin' Andre wasn't wasn't in the best shape. No. But Haku, he carried the weight of that team, and he did a really good job. How hot was Nancy at this point, though? She was smoking hot. Oh, yeah, I agree. A uh, thousand percent. So I don't Orton actually had charisma, though. Ben Juan Sullivan. Eh. <laughs> Jose wanted to get in the ring, and then he thought twice about it. We saw Ming enter the arena. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Something's about to happen. Oh, uh, we're gonna get Sullivan. Is he coming out? No, we got Jackie. Boy, she was a tough woman too. Look at yeah. those evil eyes on her. Hungry eyes. What is with all of the people in this crowd wearing fucking sunglasses? <laughs> Seriously, what is going on with all these people? The bright is it that right in there? I don't know. Dude, the guy next to the dime store, Hulk Hogan, with the camera out there, man, he's getting his sucking snapshots out. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Nancy's evil eyeing that camera there. She's mean mugging that son of a bitch. This was before, like, digital cameras, too. 
So this you actually need to give you the uh, disclaimer about not taking any flash photography and pictures during the shows. Like oh, anybody yeah. actually didn't do that. Oh yeah. The other guy's got his fucking Nikon out there. Hulk Hogan's got his Nikon out right there. I want bought this from Walmart. I'm taking it back after I get those pictures developed. And all the workers look the same. They all look the same. <laughs> it's a Charlotte thing. The hangover shades are in full force. They all went out partying with Flair. Yeah, that could make sense. Yeah, yeah. Or Flair yeah. bought the bought the last night the the, the entire uh, fucking Marriott's drinks out there. All the fans knew where to go. Ten thousand people were lined up in the Marriott. Ric Flair bought drinks for everybody the entire night. Woo! How you doing? Maxed his credit card out and had to sign another year contract with uh, WCW for it. Oh my god! What, but they sure what, had a good time. Was this his third or fourth wife? Maybe his twelfth. <laughs> Maybe his twelfth. There's only a two shot limit per person because I still got to make my alimony payment. God, man. Fucking Benoit was in good shape here, bro. Oh, yeah. You think he was hitting the sauce? A little bit. You think he was hitting the juice? Yeah. I, yep. And honestly, I think since this is a a form of performance entertainment, I believe steroids shouldn't be that big of an issue. I agree, as long as it's under a doctor's care and it's done legally. Yeah, so... So, like, the fact that you have these people for, oh, my God, wrestler steroids. It's like, really? It, But you guys are calling it fake and saying that it's not a real sport. So does it fucking matter? I mean, it's, it is what it is. Bobby's so, in kind of rare form tonight. He's kind of salty tonight. Oh, he is. I'm enjoying you, Bobby's commentary. I'll say that. Do you think Bobby started drinking heavily at this time? I think Bobby was fucking having some mean, uh, mean gene martinis in the back. With oh, yeah. Because I think in like nineteen, from ninety eight through like two thousand, just Bobby like phoned it in. Yeah, he definitely did. I mean, you can't blame him. He really got kind of pushed aside, and eh, you know, it was kind of the end of the road for him. I still think he had a lot of, uh, you know, I think he had a lot of, you know, gas left in his tank. But so, so you're saying that. The WCW was wrong for replacing Bobby Heenan with Mark Madden. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Madden was terrible on commentary. I agree. Fucking awful. Now, do I think Mark Madden is a bad personality, like where he's not funny to listen to sometimes? I think Mark no. Madden is very entertaining at certain points. They tried to have the Jerry Lawler effect. With and he him. didn't even come close. Yeah. The dude has been like fired from every place he's ever been because he's such a toxic turd. Yeah, I yeah I agree. You know he he's 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 slapstick comedy and that and it's not even that funny half the time. Who's that guy from the first Monday Night Raw? Ron, uh, Ron Bartlett. Do you think they would have done better with Ron, with Ron Bartlett? I don't know if anybody would have done better with Ron Bartlett. Okay. <laughs> Ron Bartlett is a forgotten name for wrestling that people want to try to erase that chapter of their lives listening to Ron Bartlett on there. Randy Savage almost beat the fucking shit out of him multiple times on the show. And that would have been a hell of a lot more entertaining than Ron Bartlett's commentary. Jeff Harvey. What about uh, Mike Adamley? Mike Adamley. Wow, there's a blast from the past, too. Jeff Harvey. <laughs> so who would you rather have, Ron Bartlett uh, Mike Adam Lee. I'm going with Adam Lee, bro. His, his fuck-ups on the air were absolutely <laughs> tremendous. Okay? Jeff Harvey. All right? That's all I can say. You can tell he wasn't a wrestling fan. No. Nah, he was going through, I think they said, some real personal issues at the time. I think he had some medical conditions and stuff that was affecting his uh, ability to remember things from what I've heard. So... I think he, uh, I could be wrong, but I think he has like some form of Parkinson's or dementia or something like that. He's a good person though. I, uh, yeah, That's what they said. It was just the wrong place and the wrong time for him. And he was having medical issues or personal problems. But yeah, Daniel even says it here. Adam Lee takes it every time over Bartlett. Not even close. <laughs> I remember watching some of the stuff with Adam Lee when he was on there. And I would just yeah. sit over there and I was like, did he really just fucking say that? <laughs> like... This is the guy that's a, a pro. Now, I'll say this. I used to love Mike Adam Lee back in the uh, American Gladiator days with the Zonk, Larry Zonk on there. They were great. Yes. 
That's a show we should go back and watch some of the old shows one day. Fucking American Gladiators. That's not a bad idea, actually. Dun, 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 dun. I used to love that thing, that, that music. And then yes. they, I, I still remember, like, they had some of these, like, competitors on there that were just awesome. I remember one of them, Wesley Two Scoops Berry. <laughs> this guy killed the Gladiators and everything he did. He just made them look stupid. Oh, uh-huh. Minions just having fun beating his ass here. He's just having a blast right now saying, good, good meat. Get up, Benoit. I whip your ass even more. He's got, well, he got up there. He's still fighting it. Daniel says here. He says if they had kept him to like a segment every great while, it might have been okay, but nope, let's make him a GM. Yeah, let's make him a GM. Let's put him on commentary. It's a smart move. Let's throw him right out and out to the fucking Wolves on Monday Night Raw. He I, was terrible. <laughs> yes, I agree a thousand percent. I, 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 I just don't under, yeah. I would say the best Raw GM of all time would be Eric Bischoff, hands down. And I'd say the best SmackDown was holla, holla, holla. Teddy Long, player. Yeah. Oh, man. German suplex on Ming. That Damn. is impressive. Ming's a 300 pound fucking guy, man. He's going to hit him with that Tonga Ooh. death grip here, I think, soon. Good God. They're going at it with each they other. They're beating the shit out of each other. Ming is hitting him so hard. Look at that sweat just fucking just shooting off of him when he hits him. Jesus Christ. Looks like somebody's taking a spray bottle and spraying it. That's how hard he's hitting them. <laughs> it's got the crippled cross face on Ming now. I don't think Ming's tapping out, though. He has pounded down repeatedly. Seriously. That That's much. a great line by Shivani right there. He's pounded, pounded down. down repeatedly. This is a family show. Come on, Tony. Tony. Tony, come on. Is Benoit going to go out here for like the head dive or the headbutt dive? I assume. He's measuring. Oh. Let's see. Yep. Oh, beautiful. Jesus. Good guy. That was a little stiff. That's what she said. Yep. Hey, Very much on. leeway on nose pads out there. Look at the guy in the fedora. Dude, that's a sexy fedora. He's got sunglasses on, too, so he's a douchebag. <laughs> Damn! I'm just being honest. What did I tell you? If you're wearing sunglasses inside in my book, what are you? A douche. You're a douche. Benoit not realizing this beating is like recess time for Ming and Tonga. <laughs> An absolute douche. There's Dusty Knuckles sandwich right there, baby. Oh, Benoit escapes that. Is he going to hit a German off the top? Oh, Waiting ooh. anxiously with anticipation, his name is Jeff Harvey. Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mike is here. Mike Adamley. Benoit's Jeff. going up for the flying headbutt right now. Ooh. Oh, good God. He caught him with the Tongan death grip. This match is actually better than what I thought it would be. I agree. This has probably been my most entertaining match of the night. Yeah, he's gonna go out. I think. Good God! Look at her. Look at look at look at Nancy out there begging him. Come on, fight for me. Yeah, he's going out. Do you hear Dusty? That's it. That's it. Nobody gets out from it. Ming won. Holy fuck. Look at his hand sinking into his throat there. Good God. The crowd just went quiet. Jesus. Those two beat the shit out of each other, though. But I hate to say it, Ming rarely ever won. He really didn't. Not too much. He won that one, though. He did. All right, so let's end it there for tonight. We'll end it at that mark here. So uh, give me your thoughts on the show. What do you got? Um, uh, average. Yeah, 
I wouldn't even call it average. Um, it's it's pretty bad when the best match has been Wild versus Ming. Pretty much. Yeah. The match was Mysterio, and uh, the other guy was absolutely fucking dreadful. The uh, match with the Malenko and Jarrett uh, was serviceable, and uh, and that's about it. I can't really say much more. It, the thumbs down so far. I agree. So yeah. Well, I'm going to save it right here, okay? So we're going to have some good entertainment now because we're both giving a thumbs down so oh, far. Oh, oh, and like the women's match. Garbage. Yeah. Daniel says, never do Ray versus Yuji again. Well, the good news is we have some entertainment here tonight, and we have it from none other than our cameo of the week, and it is uh, one of the real stars of professional wrestling today, one of our favorites. I know he's one of Daniel's favorites for sure, and I did this just for Daniel tonight. Because Daniel got me this really awesome, uh, you know, gift today that I got in the mail. So this was all for my my good buddy Daniel. Daniel got me this beautiful uh, Henry Roland Gartner autographed photo right in my back, right there. It's pretty damn awesome, and I love it. So I had to pick one of Daniel's favorites for the cameo of the week, and this gentleman never disappoints, Chris. Ever, really. This cameo blows my mind that people would pay this amount of money for this, but here it's hilarious shit. So this is for Daniel. This is for you. This is for all the wrestling fans out there. And the cameo of the week is none other than the AEW uh, world heavyweight champion, Mr. Maxwell Jacob Friedman is here this week. Okay, Chris. All right. I'm excited. All right. So let's start it off here. We're going to do our first one of the week and uh, let's get a little MJF here. Uh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Listen, Baldo, first of all, weird fucking name. <laughs> God damn. I've heard of Where's Waldo, but I've never heard of Where's Baldo. Just a weird fucking name. Shouldn't be proud of it. That's A. So here's why this is happening, unfortunately. Uh, your girlfriend, I'm guessing, Jessica, uh, wanted me to hit you up and tell you that you got a cute butt in shorts. <laughs> Doubt it. Uh, and she also God, said damn. to say that you're a great boyfriend and a bunch of other gushy shit that I don't really care for. Here's the deal, Valdo. This Jess chick, she seems nice and all, but do you really want to only sleep with one girl for the rest of your life? Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching a dumb, worthless, cowardice piece of shit named Bam. And if you're wondering, I am the youngest and fastest rising star in the history of professional wrestling. I am Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Bam spent a lot of money on me, and I give so little of a fuck about Bam that I recorded it in my Tesla. (laughs) All right, Nicholas, here's the deal. Heard your parents might be splitting up. And let me be honest, that shit's not easy. All right, I know a lot of people that happened too. However, it could be way worse. You know, you could be your dad, right? <laughs> Ugly as sin, dumb as fuck, <laughs> right? And, and if I'm being honest with you, if I'm being fully honest with you here, Nikki, you're 15, you're saying you're going to wait to be 18 to beat your dad's ass. But here's the deal. I saw a photo of James, okay? He's old, man. He's downtrodden. I say pounce right now. What are you even waiting for? <laughs> Screw him. Anyway, I'm MJF. I'm better than you, and you know it. And uh, to be completely honest with you, I'm only doing this because your dad paid me a lot of money. Could care less about you or your feelings. This pounce. You know, I really didn't want to do this, Chris. And I'm going to tell you why. Take him out. Because normally I don't like talking to fat, worthless pieces of shit who drive disgusting, shitty, old, rusted up Acuras, (laughs) eat nothing but fucking chicken and white rice, and obviously, obviously need to go back to college. Chris, you are a worthless sack of shit, loser piece of shit, but it's Christmas time and I'm feeling generous. Just call me Santa Claus. I'm feeling good, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down the chimney and I'm going to take my hand. I'm going to shove it right down your stupid, dumb, triple chin fucking throat. (laughs) If you do not go back to college, I swear to God, Chris, I swear to God, I'm taking away your chicken rights (laughs) and your shitty accurate. Mickey Jones, apparently it's your birthday. Apparently you're also a wrestling promoter, which doesn't shock me because I saw a photo of you and you look like a sleazy, fat, gelatinous, talentless piece of shit. (laughs) Apparently you run a promotion called 172Q Batman Symbol Wrestling. Wow, hell of a great name, JP. You're really killing it. I'm sure you're drawing a whole lot for booking Brian Pillman Jr. (laughs) Great call, (laughs) worth every penny. Happy birthday, you talentless piece of shit. Oh, you gotta love MJF. Uh, 
And I got a surprise for the both of you real quick. It, and then, okay, here we go. You got to love me some shit, man. I'm telling you. Oh my you know what god! The best oh part god. about MJF's cameos are what's that? The guy charges people six hundred fucking dollars to sit over there and to do a forty-five second trashing of them, and six hundred bucks if you want to book book a personalized call with them. It's fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, um. Well, I mean, you got people that are willing to donate to Donald Trump, even though he's uh, supposedly rich. So why not donate to MJF? You gotta, you gotta love that MJF actually makes money on that shit, and people pay him that much money to sit over there and trash him. I, Good that's for him. It. Yeah, that's what I say, man. Well, that's gonna wrap it up here for us tonight, here, my friends, and uh, we are gonna be excited on that. Yeah, closing thoughts for the month. Uh, sorry, Paul Palmer. Um, I, I haven't said that yet and uh yep and this uh, piece of shit and hey <laughs> and this was honestly one of the funnest shows i've ever done so yeah it was an absolute blast we had so, some yeah. great laughs tonight by the way i'm just gonna say that we, oh, had, yeah, we, we, we had some good laughs with it didn't we yes we did we, we had a blasty blast and next week we'll be wrapping up uh part two of this uh wonderful show so uh yeah we'll see where it goes when we got the minister of defense we got Kevin Green, we got Rowdy Piper, we got, uh, I think we got some Mongo on there, we got Hall Nash and Six, um, yeah buddy, we're gonna have a star-studded <laughs> affair next week, hopefully it's uh, better than Ray Mysterio Jr. versus Yuji Yakamoda. And Tony Khan's gonna bring his fourth pair of underwear, so I'm just saying. Yeah, he's, he's ready for business, I'm telling you. Yes. <laughs> well folks, we'll be back again next week, same time, same place, come on back for another fun episode here where we're going to finish out spring stampede 1997 so for the crock of shit cup winner brother martin the gelatinous piece of shit driving his acura who's had his chicken rights taken away from him hyundai you son of a bitch all right take your hyundai away you gelatinous lard ass piece of shit santa fe santa fe okay i'm quoting i'm quoting mjf here it's not my personal thoughts here all right Go back to the jabroni section over there, the snack bar at Walmart. Mr. Incredible is coming to get you, Martin. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We're on out of here for the week. We will see you again next week. Thanks for checking out the Retro Wrestling Revival. Have a great rest of the week. And uh, once again, make sure you like and follow the page here on Facebook or on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscription button. We'll catch you all again soon right here on the Retro Wrestling Revival.